Hello, YouTube friends. I am gonna show you today how to make this liquid soap using no crock pot, no microwave, no stove top. Very easy to make a beautiful liquid soap. Watch to the end of the video where I show you what I would have done differently to this recipe. Also, watch for the recipe using soapy.com where I show you how to formulate your own liquid soap recipe. Enjoy and I'll see you at the end. <laughs> Hello soapers, I am going to show you how to make a cold processed liquid soap. Yay! No heat, no crock pot, just lye, water, and your oil. Before we start this recipe, I want you to understand that when you're making liquid soap, what you're really making is a paste that you will be diluting into a liquid soap gel. So let's start doing this. So this recipe is going to be a dual lye soap, meaning I'm going to use two types of lye. I'm going to use sodium hydroxide, which is normally used in hard bar soap, and I'm going to use potassium, potassium hydroxide, which is normally used in liquid soap. I've printed my recipe off of soapy.com and Following this video will be another video on how to use soapy.com to formulate your cold processed liquid soap. So this soap calls for 3.2 ounces of castor oil and 28.8 ounces of rice bran oil, which I already measured and put in here in take one of this video that didn't turn out. So <laughs> that step was done. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside. I'm going to measure out my fragrance and have it ready to put in to just kind of pour it into my liquid soap as I'm blending it and sodium lactate. I'm gonna add sodium lactate at 2% of my oil weight. So my oils are gonna be 32 ounces times 0 0.02 and that's gonna give me 0.64. So I'm gonna add 0.64 of an ounce of sodium lactate. So I'm gonna measure it out, tearing off or zeroing my um, my scale. I'm gonna do 0 0.64. And sodium lactate just helps your, your soap uh, dilute when we add, when we go to the when we go to the dilution phase, it just helps your cold process liquid soap to dilute. For hard, for cold process bar soap, it is gonna help it to be very hard. And then I'm gonna add my fragrance and I'm gonna add my fragrance, I believe it says here 0.96 of an ounce. So I'm just gonna leave my sodium lactate on there and I'm just gonna add my 0.96, actually I'm just gonna add one ounce. And it, you know, soap is forgiving. Um, it's okay if you go over a little bit. There we go, we have our one ounce. So they're ready to add to my liquid soap, probably right after uh, it starts to emulsify. Sometimes fragrance can do weird things to your soap. I'm just gonna leave it right here. I like to use the top of my stove because it's made of glass. If I get anything on there, I can wipe it off easy. It's not like my granite. And also up here, I have my fan for ventilation. I'm gonna measure out my liquid. I'm gonna measure out my water now. And I'm gonna zero off my scale with my plastic cup on it. And this recipe calls for total water weight, 12.16 ounces always used distilled water in your cold process liquid soap because other waters have solids in them that you don't see like calcium and other, oh, this is overflowing, and other solids that um, will, will mess around with your soap recipe and it can also make it so it's not clear. So we're doing 12.16. Mine at 12.4. Pour a little bit off. Okay, 12.15. Crap. 
close enough. I'm gonna set that aside and measure out my hydroxides, which I'm gonna go put some gloves on for. Okay, so I'm going to be measuring 1.7 ounces of sodium hydroxide, so a little less than of that, and I'm gonna be measuring out four, 3.97 ounces of potassium hydroxide. I'm going to use my vental, my venting system here because powder does go up in the air and I don't wanna breathe that in. So I'm gonna be using this, so I'm sorry, it's gonna be a little loud. After your lye is measured out, you want to always add your lye powder to your distilled water and not vice versa because if you add water to powdered lye, it will bubble over and it can kind of have like a volcano effect. So always add your powder to your water and then you can't see or maybe you can but there's some fumes coming off and those fumes are going right up my ventil the the hood over my stove and going out so it's it's really great to have that that hood that ventilation above it i'm just stirring it until the lye dissolves while the lye is cooling down i'm going to take the vessels that i measured my lye in and i'm going to go in the sink and rinse them out and leave them to dry so now that my vessels are rinsed out and drying on paper towel, it's time for me to go back to my lye water and add it to my oil. There is no specific temperature required for your, your oils or your lye water, you just simply add it. Now sometimes I will we'll make my lye water in the nighttime, I'll cover it with plastic wrap and put a sign, do not touch, and just come back the next day and make my soap for no reason, just for convenience. So at this time, you can also add your fragrance and your sodium lactate if you are using it, and then just continue to, emul to emulsify using the immersion blender. Um, it will be liquidy, and you do not have to come to thick trace. It does not have to look like pudding. It can just be liquidy, just like it is. And once you're satisfied that it's mixed well after a couple minutes, we can just set it aside for 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes, you're gonna come back and with your immersion blender, you're just gonna give it another stir for a couple of minutes. It's still gonna be liquidy and that is totally okay. I'm gonna cover it with some saran wrap and just set it aside. And I'll just keep checking on it. That's it, super easy. It's nice and warm. So it has a has to go through the saponifana sapon. <laughs> it has to go. It has to saponify. There you go. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna set it here, and uh, just leave it there with my stick blender. If I come and look at it, I'll make sure to just kind of video little transitions that it's making. Right now, it's 5:14. Okay. Well, it's seven o'clock. I don't know how. I think it's been an hour and 45 minutes. I want to give it a start. Look at that. Look at how it's starting to turn to gel. Can you see like the middle of the? Thank you, Caden. Caden's helping me out here. There. This is looking exactly how it should look at this stage, the gelling stage. And it's too thick for my stick blender at this point. So I'm just gonna stir it up. Okay. 
It looks perfect. It smells really good. Nice and fresh smelling. Good morning. It, it has been about 18 hours since we made this soap. And it is great. This is what you want your soap to look like. Depending on the oils you use, your soap may be more hard, which means just it'll take a little bit more to dilute it. Or it could just look like this but it definitely shouldn't be liquidy at this point. So now I'm gonna do the zap test on the soap. I'm just gonna get a little bit of soap, a very small amount of soap on the tip of my finger. And I'm gonna touch the tip of my tongue with it. If it stings, there is still some excess lye in the soap and we might have to neutralize it with citric acid. Um, so let me just do that, okay done it is uh totally fine tastes like so and there's no sting or anything from it last stage is to dilute it now it's time to dilute our gel into liquid soap our ratio of dilution is going to be one part gel to two parts distilled water so we could start by making a quart of it by adding 10 ounces of gel and 20 ounces of distilled water to make one quart of liquid soap. And that will need to sit and dilute. It does take some time for the pieces of gel to dilute and it can actually take several days. Um, but you will see that the gel floats on the top and you can actually pour off of the bottom or scoop the gel that's undissolved aside, which is what I do, and then pour off the liquid soap from the bottom and use that. This soap was very conditioning, very conditioning, really nice to your skin. But to me, it was not bubbly enough. So what I would have done with this recipe is in my water that I used for my lye, I would have dissolved two tablespoons of sugar in there. You put the two tablespoons of sugar in the water, you dissolve it before you add your lye powders to your water and that would add a lot of bubbliness to your recipe but give this recipe a try i think you will really like how conditioning and gentle it is it's uh, turned out to be a really wonderful um, liquid soap if you find that your gel is not completely dissolving don't worry just add a little bit more distilled water on top and for storing this soap, whether it's diluted or not diluted, it doesn't really require any special storage. You don't have to put it in the refrigerator. I just leave mine out in room temperature on top of my fridge or wherever, and I just use it. it I've never grown mold in my soap. It's never gone bad. And so personally, I do not worry about that. Um, use your soap, enjoy it. Let me know any comments you have on this and give it a try. What have you got to lose? It's always fun to try and make new things, new crafts, new hobbies are always a lot of fun. And, um, so be a little adventurous and give this a try. So subscribe and check off the bell for notifications because I have other recipes coming for liquid soap. And I especially have one I'm excited about, which is coconut avocado cream soap. Bye. I just wanted to say that if you're interested in any of the products that I'm making on my channel, my soaps, my tumblers, my pens, you can go to my Etsy store or, or, or Janix or Janix. I'll put the link below in the description and you can purchase them.